full session 001. That is when Tom and Calvin are going to lead a conversation around the 007 films. You're not going to want to miss it. Tom Sears of James Bond Radio. You know him. You love him. Well, you know him. And Calvin Dyson. Hello, James Bond fans. <laughs> Good evening, James. I can't do it. Calvin will do it, though. I, I have a feeling he'll be wearing his patented bow tie, so watch for that. I was, I was up way too early this morning. Hello from Gibraltar. Stephen, hello there. 3 p.m. in the UK. That's, that's more human time. The nice thing is, though, no matter what time it is, you're going to be able to jump on and off. Don't lose your link. I hope you held on to your link. That is your, your ticket in. And for those just joining, as I mentioned, plenty of good seats here. Tell your friends they can register at any time throughout the day. Remember that. And I'm going to take a sip of water before we start. What's that you say? Here in Philadelphia, just above Philadelphia, it is about 69 degrees. It is going to become 81. It's a little balmy, a little humid, but only water. Yes, John, only water because it's 10 a.m., but <clears throat> I should drink some champagne because it adds a sparkle to the day. But I do have this bottle as well, which, which may have something else besides water. Who knows? Who knows where today is going to take us? Joseph, good morning from Princeton. I could, I could open my window and call out to you. That's how close you are to me. You probably know that. Who's drinking Bollinger? First of all, is anybody having a drink right now? I mean, that's, that's impressive if you are. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it is time. It is time. I want to welcome everybody as people are filing in a little bit at a time. The attendees are stacking up. We have currently 784 people registered. That's amazing. And it's a testimony to all of us wanting to escape a little bit today and have a little bit of fun. People are going to be jumping on and off. You're going to be jumping on and off. It's eight plus hours. So we're going to get cooking right now. And Without further ado, I'd like to kick this off in kind of an inspirational way. So, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Look after Mr. Bond. See that some harm comes to him. You defy all my attempts to plan an amusing death for you. You have a nasty habit of surviving. Everybody needs a hobby. So what's yours? Resurrection. way to welcome everybody. And it really starts the theme about today. Now, listen, you're probably here for a lot of different reasons, right? We all have different things that we like about James Bond, some things in common. We've got cars. Some of you like the gadgets. Some of you like the location. Some of you style. Many of you movies, even more so maybe the books. But there's a reality to something that we all share, and that's the culture of Bond. And if you can say anything about James Bond, it's that he's capable. And he's got three things that are going for him. He's got a lot of fortitude. He's incredibly resilient. And he's tenacious as hell. And I think we share that in James Bond. We may not all have the cars or the style or those different things, but this group, this Bond community is resilient as hell. 
and we're all about resurrection. And today is about that. It's about not just a celebration of James Bond and the Bond community. It's a celebration of the Bond fan. And we're gonna do something. We're gonna make this incredibly interactive. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run a little bit of a poll. So get ready for this, everybody. And I want you to participate, so here we go. Let's see if I can bring this up. Hold on. All right. You should be seeing a poll over here. I'd like everybody to answer. You'll see the answers, and I'm really curious about this answer, but it's, it's gonna spark part of the conversation when we talk about James Bond and culture and the James Bond fan. So right now, we've got the answers coming in. Lots of answers. Here we go, here we go. 86% of the audience has answered right now. Fantastic, all right. Well, let's see, let's see. So 37% of the audience is 31 to 45 years of age. We've got 32% that are 46 to 60. We've got 26 that are 18 to 30. And we've got 5% that are 61 to 75. In other words, we're all over the board. And by the way, you can click on your, your chat to go out of the poll and back into your chat. Today is about sharing these, no matter what age you are. And we're gonna prove that a little bit today with some of the panel discussions and some of my discussion as well. Let me give you a little bit of housekeeping first, because this is a new Demio platform. We chose this because it's very safe. You don't see a million faces in here. It's a closed platform. So you need to be invited to the stage, the stage that I'm on right now. For example, if you have a question during a panel, the panelists can actually click on you, find you, and invite you to the main stage. They'll send you a little notice to activate your microphone and your camera, and boom, you're on the main stage sharing a moment, sharing that immersive experience, which we're all about. So the fan culture that we're a part of, I think we just proved that it's not just about age. And it's not just about gender, and it's not about politics, it's not about geography, because you just saw we're all over the place, it's universal. And the reality is, is that everybody that came on today, so far we've got 356 people coming on, you have a story, you have something that made you love Bond. There's some corner of the world that you feel ownership of James Bond. And because it's not age related, I'm going to kind of prove this to you. I'd like to, uh, let's see if we can test the functionality of this right now. Hold on. So I am going to invite a couple of friends to the table. Let's see if we can do this. Again, this, there's going to be little warbles with this, but this is a really cool tool. And I wanna see if we can invite people. Hold on, hold on. This is how we're gonna do it all day. We're gonna, oh! Hold on a second, Brian from James Bond Aficionado. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Nice uh, pull, like by the way. You? I do. I think we're kind of wearing don't the think same so. one, you, aren't we? Yeah, you know, already we're getting into the style panel. You look like you're wearing Sunspell. I'm wearing all of our brown. So we're all representing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am uh, one. I, I'm doing nice. a little Sunspell today just because. And. According to Kyle, I did make my bed today. So yeah, you should be all impressed You know impressed something, we're, we're always impressed when you make your bed. Hey, listen, do, do us a favor. Oh, I just talked absolutely. about age and culture and things like that. T tell everybody a little bit, why did, you, why did you get into the Bond community to begin with? Well, first off, I'm 31. So just don't let that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still a baby out there. Second, uh, I got into the Bond community because I honestly had a few setbacks. Like if you heard my interview with David, I uh, had a few setbacks. I had back surgery back in January. That was uh, my first one, not my first one, but my first one this year. But my first one took part in five years ago. And, but I've been a long, long life uh, Bond fan for years to come and unfortunately that led to a another surgery uh two years later uh, and that was my colon unfortunately so i've had some downtime all the uh all these years and 
after uh, this last back surgery in January, I was like, you know what? I need to find some sort of therapy. And of course, I've had some family issues as well that are health related. And I used uh, this Spawn community as a pretty much a uh, a therapy tool. Like unlike uh, some people use uh, animals and such, but I use uh, this uh, James Bond community. So I result back to, of course, you, David, uh, Joe Darlington, Calvin Dyson, uh, and several others uh, that I can name in this amazing community, I should say as a therapy tool and, and you moved therapy relaxing. to creation because you started to actually create content what what was the what was the push to do that that is correct i would have to honestly say calvin uh watching a lot of his videos uh seeing the upbeat uh he brings to his content uh he definitely uh motivated me and said when I and I realized when I was talking with him, this is definitely something you got to do and you got to stick with. So, Calvin, I know you're out there. I want to say thank you for everything you've done for my yeah. therapy side, keeping my uh, positivity going, and it means so much. And I, I, I got to thank you as well, David, Joe, everybody out there. So thank you for the positivity and the warm welcome. Well, I think that's that's so. an important thing. It's it's not about it's not about views. It's not about followers. It's about each other supporting each other, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you you know you know started out kind of just connecting and, and doing short little experiential moments, and you know I, I definitely wanted to have you on as part of the story. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have less than one minute before Tom Sears and Calvin Dyson take the stage. Everybody, please return to your seats. Tom Sears and Calvin Dyson, please take the main stage. Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, as I believe what uh, David was trying to say earlier on. <laughs> I actually love that impression, David, so thank you very much for that. I uh, hope I'm coming in all right video sound-wise. I think I'm precisely 50% of this panel, and Mr. Tom Sears will be joining any second now. I think he's there. Are you here, Tom? Or maybe I'm 100% of this panel now. <laughs> or I hope that Tom can uh, can join, seeing as he knows more about this technology than I do. Um, oh, but hello, everyone. Peter, Jonathan, Dennis. Ah, there he is. There we go. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, perfectly. And see you perfectly as well. You are looking very yeah. dapper as usual. I like it. Thank you very much. I'm boiling hot in this. So I don't know how long it'll last. I sent you a text earlier, didn't I? I said, I'm not going to go. Last time I did Dickie Bow full jacket, the whole thing, and it's so hot. I'm like, I'm just going to be a ball of sweat if I do that again. So I'm going more casual, you know. It's yeah. yeah. Shirt by, but I salute you, my man, for, uh, you know, going all out. It's good work. It's only a clip on, but you know, <laughs> it's it, it's it's some semblance of effort. <laughs> so, what? Anyway, uh, look at you! You're if you weren't proper famous already, a YouTube sensation. You're proper famous now after that praise from Williams, man. Good on you, man. Thanks. I'm very yeah. I was like blushing like mad um, when that happened. So that was yeah, quite exciting and nice to know that he disagrees with my videos. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. What a legend. Uh, hopefully. Yeah bump into him someday yeah hey i want to get in on those private bond movie viewings with Britt eckland and the man with the golden gun and all the rest of it that sounds like a lot of fun that definitely needs to happen yeah for sure all right cool so we're going to talk about movies for the next hour um so correct the, the way this is going to flow is if you have any questions let us know in the chat box and then our special man at q branch is going to bring you on camera and on mic as well um so anybody who has a question i guess because this is a bit different to the to the whole zoom setup if you type in i have a question in all capital letters and then we will pick somebody at random 
and bring you on uh, and bring you on camera. Now, David said we we had a lot of controversial things to say, and I, I'm, that makes me nervous because have you got anything controversial you want to share? Oh, I've got so many controversial things to share. It's uh, yeah. I mean, we really want this to be kind of like a discussion. I uh, I think so. Even it like a question. This is Q uh, branch. You know, this is Q branch calling. We have Aiden entering the stage. All right. Marvelous. All right, Aiden's on his way. There's always a few few seconds delay before the uh, you know the the camera comes on and the microphone comes on and stuff. Q branch sound. In quite me? familiar doesn't he for some reason <laughs> somewhere. i think they've recast ben wishaw <laughs> you don't want me doing a british accent <laughs> oh i think we do oh the gauntlet has been thrown yes we do <laughs> right. okay hopefully hopefully we will have somebody jumping on in any second all right so far this is going very smoothly though i'm very i i like the whole demio thing it seems to be Mm. seems to be very smooth all right we've got some more questions pop up in the chat there yeah like i say anybody anybody who's got anything they want to ask any thought-provoking bonding questions or whatever you want to talk about just write i have a question in all caps and uh q branch will bring you on uh jbr diner the day review right now ha! You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put that one up as long as i possibly can all right how are we getting on q branch are we doing all right there or, or do we need to bring somebody else on? We're bringing somebody else on. Okay. Yeah, just for everybody at home, if you have any problems with Demio, you're best on, uh, uh, on Chrome, on Chrome browser. That's the, you're supposed to get the smoothest experience. Okay. Oh, we've got some action happening. We've got some action. Somebody. Bill, hello. Oh. Oh, we can't, we can see it. I don't think we've got any audio. Have you got any audio there, Calvin? No, uh, Bill, you might have to turn on. Hold on, we're, we're letting uh, full MI6 access for Bill. Bill, why don't you try again? Bill just disconnected himself. Can you hear there me? There we go. Yeah. Bill, you're on. Perfect. Oh. Good. Can you guys hear yes. me? Terrific. I can, I can see you, Bill. I don't see you moving, but that's hey, fine. Hey, we can hear you now. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. good to see you both again. I, no, I was thinking, all right, because presuming that No Time Today will be Craig's last hmm. film. Uh, in terms of the MI6 team for the next one, would you think they should be recast or do you think they should use the team as is? Mm. Tom, do you want to go first? I, I would say a little bit of both. I think I, I of everybody, I want uh, Ray Fiennes to stay on. I think he's a cracking M and I've said it before and I will say it again, I think the older and more crusty he gets, the more Bernard Lee like he's going to get, the better he's going to be. And I don't want him to leave before he reaches that stage in life. I want to see, I want to see a proper old grumpy, crusty M. And we see a bit of that, but I don't think he's quite old enough to really do it yet. Um, so I want, I definitely want him to stick around. I think Ben Wishaw said he would leave with Daniel. I think that's been floating around. Is that right, Calvin? I think he's, um, yeah. yeah. So I think we'll, we'll get a new cue, I would imagine. Okay. I don't know. It's a funny one because when you watch the old ones, it's kind of like, it's so comforting seeing Desmond and right. Bernard and Lois and all the, all the core team. It's such a lovely thing to see them. And I always have a smile on my face when they come back. It feels like family. You know what I mean? Uh, so I would, exactly. I would dearly exactly. like that kind of vibe. Uh, and obviously we won't, we won't get Ben Wishaw uh, by the sounds of things. I, I've got a feeling that Naomi will probably move on as well. So I, I feel like we'll probably get a, a mostly recasting, but I'm just hoping old Ray Fine sticks around. What about you, Calvin? Uh, I'm, I'm similar opinion to you, except I would like Ben Wishaw to stick around because he's so young and he could really just grow in that part for like for decades. But as he's already said, you know, he's probably going to leave when Craig does. And if you have acted like the problem with Money, Penny, M and Q as they are now is that they are all big names and they can lead stage right. shows and TV shows and movies and all this kind of stuff. So the more that they're in it the bigger role they're gonna want because they're not actors to necessarily just do something for a paycheck you know they want like nice meaty parts and you know it's it's a trade-off do you want those actors or do you want you know, you know the characters to be more like bit parts again played by character actors like bernard lee desmond llewellyn um those people hey. um what about you bill what's your uh, take on it that's 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 a, i'm not sure myself yeah. you know it, it, presuming that the next film will be I don't know, reboot again or whatever it is, maybe cast an entire team mm. that 
He looked more like Bernard. I think Tanner should also be involved too in some in some way. Right. So, yeah. But, yeah, because we neglected to mention him really, but he's been in more than yeah, yeah. yeah Ray Fiennes, Ben Whishaw, Naomi Harris at the moment. So uh, yeah, which it'd be, it would be nice to see that character really have more of an impact in some way. Uh, oh, absolutely! I mean, he was such an essential part of the books. It was kind of given. Uh, it wasn't until Michael Kitchen, with, you know, with uh, with Goldeneye, that he really developed as as something in the film. Yeah, totally. You know. Uh, but yeah, I would like to have an actor play Tanner as well as well as yeah. the other three. Mm. All right, well, thanks for thanks a lot. No guys. worries, no worries. Thank I you. See you again soon, sometime. All right, cool. There was a, there's a scene at the beginning of Colonel Sun. I would love them to film Colonel Sun and make it into a oh. movie. And there's a scene at the beginning where Bond yeah. and Tanner are playing golf together, and I thought that would be such a great way. Like a, even if it didn't, it wasn't the same film, but it was that scene. I'd love to see Bond back on the golf course, and him playing with Tanner would be a nice little touch. I would really like to see that. I completely agree because in the films we've never really gotten Bond and Tanner as like buddies like they're you know sort of implied to be in the books and it would be nice to see that the closest we probably came was Goldeneye with the uh, Brosnan and Michael Kitchen. I was just going to say that that scene before Ed comes mm. in and he's calling there the evil queen of numbers and all that kind of stuff they feel like schoolboys yeah. don't they like naughty little schoolboys together and yeah I, exactly I get I get the impression that Pierce's Bond and Michael Kitchen were proper good mates whereas Yes, yeah. yeah, the Rory Kinnear, Bill Tanner, I feel like he's more of somebody who just works in the office rather than a close personal friend, you know, but uh, yeah. All right, cool. Does uh, does Q Branch have somebody else in the wings for the next question? Gentlemen, yes, we do. We have Joe coming to the stage. Joe coming to the stage, all right. If this is Joe Darlington, I'm going to be very... <laughs> it's not. He's been banned from Q Branch. <laughs> <laughs> So, got some good comments coming in there. Brian says, Alex, Alex Trevelyan is my favorite villain. He's a good one. Absolutely. Bond and Tanner in the pub. So those of you who are asking your question, you should be getting a um, request to turn your camera on and to turn your mic on. You just have to click on those. I'll try a different one. Amer, A-M-E-R. Keep chatting away, guys. You have tons, right. of, tons of good thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> like listening to Cuban. Um, yeah, I know. I just like reading the comments. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've seen a lot of love for Le Chiffre in the comments. Le Chiffre, yeah. man, I think Le Chiffre might be my favorite villain of all time. I think. That, yeah. Did you know what was interesting about Casino Royale? I've always said is I remember during the Brosnan period, and I love Brosnan. And you love Brosnan as well, which mm. makes me very happy. I love Brosnan so much. But like, it was, you know, you, the common thing that people say is that obviously those films were very sort of, you know, formulaic and all the rest of it. Mm. Um, oh, have we got somebody? But you thought all the best Bond films had already been made by that point, and then they bring in, mm. and it was such a, a belter of a movie. And that, Le oh yeah, he, I didn't expect to love a villain so much as I did Le Chief. I think he's he's brilliant to like. Take a an old school Bond villain with like a scar, a scar across the eye and the weeping blood, and bring him up to date. Yeah, that was such a genius way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Okay, I think we have Amos yes. on the line. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. I mean, ah, yes, oh, hello. Situation. So yeah, uh, I had a question. Why was um, why did they not and have Q in Living Die? Signed in, it let me in for a brief period and then it kicked me out and then brought me back again. So there might be a look. There we go. Here we go. We've got some action. Yeah, my question was why did they not uh, have Q in Living and Die? Why did Ooh. Q in Living and Die? He was busy, wasn't he? I remember the story about that now. Wasn't he busy doing something else and he couldn't. He was on another movie. Yeah. yeah. And. Um... Yeah, I, I can't remember. I remember Desmond Llewellyn was sort of like, well, you know, they could have just moved the schedule to accommodate uh, me being in it, but for whatever reason, they didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a nice parallel with, like, Connery's first Bond, where, you know, you didn't have Desmond Llewellyn in that one either, so I, it, it, it's an accidental parallel there. Um, 
but I, I, I do miss Q not being in it. And it's a good pub trivia question, or, you know, it must have been a question on James Bond radio at some point, uh, sort of which movies is Desmond Llewellyn not in. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Do you wish Desmond was in it or...? or well, I, I would have ordered him. I mean, that he was part of the Bond movies, so, uh, you know, I, so, so that's why I was surprised with the first Roger Moore movie. Uh, they had M, they had Money Penny. I would have thought they would have had Q. Uh, so it's it's something that I just think I always miss in a Bond movie if Q is not there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Very much you could have had Q delivering his coffee his apartment or something. That would have been nice. <laughs> 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 All right, well, cool. thank you for, yeah. your, uh, for your No worries. Does uh, Q branch, we have, are you managing the removal of the, there Let's say up. Let's do it. All right, sweet. Okay, cool. We're getting we're getting there, man. It's it's we <laughs> with the whole new system and it's it's going nicely. I'm I'm very happy with it. Cool. For stuff. some reason, Tom, your your voice only. Oh. I can see I can see Tom. Oh. Yeah. Never mind. Maybe I just have this pleasure. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Can everybody else see me in the chat? Just say I can see you if you can see me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh 50 50. <laughs> Oh, I'm drinking a um, a whiskey and coke. By the way, I just saw that in the comments. So it's not too early. It's four o'clock. It's okay. <laughs> Actually, we I'm... are calling Nate to the stage. It may take him a couple seconds to get there, but Nate is coming to the stage. All right, good stuff. Great. While we wait for Nate to join the stage, what what do you think about uh, Desmond? Do you love Desmond as much as I love Desmond? Do you wish he was in Live Let Die? Oh, me? Yeah. I love Desmond. Yeah, no, he's fantastic. Um, I like him more when he's um, sort of in the later films, particularly with Brosnan and Dalton, where he, the character changes a bit. Like in the early days of Connery, he's just very like old school master, very strict type, you know, rolling his eyes. Whereas when you get to Dalton and Brosnan, he's more kind of like eccentric uncle inventor. And I like that. I like when he's got that twinkle in his eye and golden eye, like he's really proud of these gadgets. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really nice how they kind of evolved the character. Um, I guess that was a response to the age difference between him and Bond sort of growing as they changed Bond actors but didn't change him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's such a great Let guy. Let me ask you this. I feel like most people would be in agreement that they love Desmond. What do you think they are? Mm. Oh, I'm I'm a big Faulty Towers fan. I love a bit of John Cleese. Um, I'm, I'm fully... Yeah, the... uh, it would have been nice... <laughs> it would it would have been nice if Desmond could have done Dine of the Day, um, just to kind of, you know, uh, would feel like more of a bookend to that particular era of Bond. But um, yeah, why? where do you stand on the R front? I'm not sure. I feel, well, I haven't seen Dine of the Day in nearly 20 years, so I, I can't speak for that. But in your That's advice, right. I feel like it was a little too slapstick, you know, when the coat sort of envelops him and all the rest of it and his legs are wiggling around on the floor. I'm a little bit like, oh, maybe that was a little bit too much. I would have seen <laughs> where he goes from there. And then when I do eventually watch Die Another Day again, of course, I will I will mm. see that again. So, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. I do like his line, the legendary 007 win, or at least half of it. I thought that was a nice little, yeah. that was a nice little touch. That, yeah. that is a good line. I, I don't even mind him, like, flapping around in the inflatable. It's like, yeah, they, they hired John Cleese, and I guess they wanted to make the most of his, like, comedy stylings. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he's good in that film. Uh and him and Desmond would have made a good duo. I think it's almost a shame that they didn't bring him in a film or two earlier, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, man. I think so. Oh, oh. Sorry, Jen. So just one announcement, real quick. So, if you are doing this on an iPhone, for example, or a phone, unfortunately, you won't be able to come on and do a question or a comment. I mean, you certainly can watch uh, the convention, but you need to be on certain platforms to do that. Um, so just as a heads up, for those of you trying to come on, the reason we're having trouble is many of you are calling from a phone, and unfortunately, you can't go onto the Demio platform that way. Okay, that makes sense. All right, then. So, yeah, best best experience on a laptop. I'm seeing quite a few people saying they can't see me, so I'm going to turn my camera off and on again, and hopefully the age-old mm -hmm. computer trick. If you turn it off and then you turn it back, it <laughs> usually starts working. And back on again, yeah. Uh, I guess you could also send us a question in the chat box as well if, um, you know, while we're waiting for people to um, come on the video, if there is um, anything, you know, that you can 
type quickly, we won't be able to have as much of a conversation about it, but um, yeah. Calvin, I don't know if you could see that, but for example, I clicked on trip and hopefully if we do this, you might be able to answer it live. Oh, okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, yeah, I can see a, a question. Um, I can't see trip, but I can see oh, the question. That's that's right. Uh, okay. Yes, I would. Would you be excited for a fifties, sixties Netflix series think, based on the book? I suppose the question that's is, a, what, yeah. what I would uh, Tom, like you go. to see is I would, I would like to see <laughs> the books made precisely to the books, and I think the perception of a Bond movie these days kind of means you can't really do that like for example perfect example of that for me is casino royale if you made that exactly like the book and you didn't have you know the action set pieces like the whole free running bit you didn't have the you know miami airport you didn't have the sinking house you you need those kind of touch points in a movie don't you to keep people interested and if you would make that into a blockbuster movie i think people would walk out and be like well um, that was a bit underwhelming mm -hmm. compared to what we're used to over the last 60 odd years yeah so i think you would need to do if you were sticking true to Fleming. You would need to do mm. it on TV, and I think something like Netflix is a perfect opportunity to do that. I would love to see it. Like I'd even want him to drive his big old Bentley, you know, like that mm. big old tank thing that he would drive in the books. If you've seen the like the concept art of that thing, it's just like a bus with no roof and it's just his head sticking up with his goggles on and all the rest of it. I would love to see. That quite who i would cast i don't know because you know you wouldn't get whoever's in the mood to do that. <laughs> but yeah what about you? yeah <laughs> yeah um i i would like to see it more as a curiosity point i don't know if it would necessarily happen or i feel like you know, the reasons why we don't have completely faithful adaptations of all of the Fleming books is because they do need to be, as you said, they need to, there's different expectations for a cinema experience than a book experience. And I think, you know, the Flemings are not, you know, they're great books and I would highly recommend that every Bond fan seek them out and read them. I think it's a necessary rite of passage. However, they're not necessarily all the most perfectly plotted, uh, you know, not all of them make sense. Uh, in Goldfinger, Bond, uh, Goldfinger hires Bond to be his secretary. <laughs> for um, a good chunk of the book, which is, uh, yeah, that, obviously that didn't make it through to the film, and even when you're reading, you're sort of like, what is this? And that is a running theme through a lot of Fleming, it seems, that um, villains just hire Bond to do um, various jobs. Um, and, you know, You Only Live Twice, um, so much of that story is Bond sat around with um, Tiger Tanaka, and they're just talking about the state of the world, the state of the British Empire, all these things, and obviously that is, um, you know, T completely different to what we get in You Only Live Twice, the movie. Um, that All that being said, I think Netflix would be an interesting place to explore that. And I think maybe if Eon were to sell up, the, you know, the rights were to move to someone else, um, to someone who was more willing to exploit, I guess, um, and get lots of various different avenues of content, we might get something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know about the... Oh, hey! Hey, hey, who do we have? How's it going? Oh, we oh, can't no hear you. sound. Is there a little thing you can click? Yes. I like that, okay. detail, by the way. That's yeah, highly appropriate. I enjoy that. <laughs> Oops. You're on, Nate. Nate, say something. You're on. Maybe. Sorry, Dave. David, you're on. Oh, am I in? Am I in? You are. Hello. Hi, Hi guys. How's it going? Good. Good. Thanks. Yeah, I, I appreciate all what you guys do, all your shows, everything. It's absolutely fantastic. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. I can anyway. I'm not sure about I Tom. Like, uh, oh, no. ah. oh, there you are. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Just saying, I'm um, grateful for what you got, what you guys do on your shows and everything, on your podcasts and everything. Oh, thank um, you. Uh, thank what's you. your like, favorite piece of memorabilia from all the Bond memorabilia that's out there, basically, or movies, everything else? So, what's your favorite item? I can show you if you, Tom doesn't mind me jumping right mm -hmm. in. I have the um, Goldeneye 
key yeah. from uh, this is the factory entertainment prop replica um i was always mesmerized by this when i was a kid when they go in and put it in in the movies and you're an oromov um so that was like a real yeah i was delighted <laughs> i doubt that they made that i love that thing so one much. Of all time as well so that's nice yeah, i love it so yeah much. yeah it's just it just got everything yeah. it's got everything basically so yeah i love, yeah. love that movie <laughs> Yeah, completely. For agree. me, damn it, I, I've, I have a few, a couple things I would say that are my most treasured possessions. Number one is an original Live and Let Die vintage poster signed by Roger Moore. That's like, wow. I hug that thing at bedtime. Um, that's nice. going to be buried with me. Don't care who knows it. <laughs> and then the other thing, which was totally unexpected, um, this is going back a few years now. I, I was doing some work with uh, in the Bahamas and there was this lady that was assigned to kind of look after us in the hotel we were working at and she just bond came up because obviously we're in the bahamas and i'm like going to check out the ocean club down the road and all the rest of it as as we would and she said well here i've got something for you you really like this and then she disappeared off and then she came back and she gave me this hardback edition of casino royale that i'd never seen before opens it up inside there's a, a, an inscription saying uh, this is a gift to, to all the workers of this hotel, whatever the, the name of it was, uh, for all your help during the film of Casino Royale. And then it's signed by Daniel. Basically, what happened was all the people in the hotel where the cast and crew stayed, like certain people were given these books signed by Daniel to say thank you during the filming. And this was given, this particular copy was given to one of the chefs in the kitchen. And he was like, I don't care about that. Put it on the shelf where it stayed <laughs> from 2006 to 2012 when i showed up it was just sitting there on the shelf and she was like i have that if you want and i was like <laughs> so that's <laughs> like a, like a, uh, that's you never get that's not a normal opportunity to get something like that so that's like that's, that's amazing well. yeah like wow. those, yeah that's that's yeah, uh, that thousands cool. of pounds on ebay right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. what about you my favorite uh ooh, um my favorite right now probably i have so i do have a it was in your honor top herself <laughs> amazing oh, she, she was very awkward i must admit meeting her at the moment because her, her bodyguard was like is that a real gun <laughs> <laughs> that's probably my favorite item at the moment but uh, mm. everything golden eyes or is yeah my my question no, is <laughs> yeah it was good golden eye is my favorite of all time yeah, <laughs> yeah. cool man you had the down as no. well with the silencer and the pbk and everything good work <laughs> i i follow dave on instagram he does do amazing cosplays like oh. um ash from the evil dead you're you're amazing <laughs> at you, that. i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, what's, what's the instagram? I feel like that's long since gone since quarantine because like the extra pounds of you know it's like those are over days now it's, yeah quarantine is taking its toll <laughs> it's your instagram account i want to i want to follow you as well uh, it's just uh, dave dave john lee <laughs> dave john lee all right nice i'm gonna follow you now. No, appreciate your time guys much appreciated oh no thank, thank you, you man. cheers all good there oh hey, that's uh, nice i, I see I, his uh, I, little I, profile shot and he's in the dicky bow and the tux and everything i've got him nice. yeah yeah that's what i love about the bond community it's so like as soon as he kind of popped up there i was like oh yes we have never spoken before like in real time and yeah we follow each other on instagram um yeah it, it, it's cool i do love the bond fandom it's a good old bunch yeah man it's uh, it's a funny old world isn't it the amount of people you feel like you know that you've sort of mm. seen around online or whatever for years and then you realize you've never actually met them but uh what yeah. a dude i always like meeting a fellow golden eye fan man what an important life changing <laughs> movie that was for so many of us oh yeah no definitely it's yeah and it's still up there i saw it um you know a couple of weeks ago and it still holds up it's still Star pretty Christmas? fantastic you, we Warfare? have randy on stage we have randy on stage ah. randy hello hey Hey. Good morning. Good morning from Texas. Hey, hello, Texas. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on, David. This is uh this is really fun, and enjoy watching 
everything about Bond on YouTube. And so uh, thank you all for taking my question. Um, thank you. I wanted to ask you about Blofeld, the mm -hmm. character Blofeld, and an arch nemesis of Bond through the years, but played by different actors. Mm -hmm. um, so up until this point. So I'm wondering, is the popularity because he's been portrayed by, what was it, three different actors? Or would, have been, would there be a difference if he was played by, let's say, one mm -hmm. um, or maybe two? Just wanted to get your thoughts on that. That's a good question. Tom, do you want to go first on, on that one? Yeah, okay. I suppose for me, like, I think there's something infinitely powerful about not seeing something, right? Take a movie like Jaws, where you yeah. never really see the shark, at least not until the end part. Right. Anyway. Um, that to me is more scary. And again, like in Alien, where you don't really see the alien and it makes you, you your imagination is more powerful than what you can see on the screen in some cases. I love this the whole thing the lead up in the connery movies where you just see him from the neck down stroking the pussycat and all that kind of stuff and then i don't know i've gone on a bit of a blowfeld journey like i always used to say that um uh oh my god donald pleasance there you go I nearly had a brain donald pleasance yeah. was the blowfeld you know you got the sky you got the volcano yes. you got the pussycat you got the whole thing mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. in recent times i've leaned and charles gray is just funny he's just hilarious you know i think i that, I was, love you know, that was just a pure comedy casting. Nowadays, I lean more towards Telly Sabalas because it's like the Blofeld of the books. He, I mean, he's not bang on, but he's kind of closer. The Blofeld of the books is a bit more of a bruiser, whereas the screen Blofeld is more of a sort of frail, sort of weaker person physically. He's not a physical threat, is he? You know, you, you wouldn't be scared of Donald's Blofeld in a fist fight. Telly's Blofeld, you would. So I feel like even now i don't think they've ever got blofeld right like 100 percent bang on the money you know and i feel like I, I don't have a name to throw out there to say i wish this dude had played blofeld from day one i don't know who it is but i feel like there is the best blofeld related bond film is yet to be made i would say um and yeah. and yeah i do i do think there would there would probably be more impact if it was the same person and especially how it all happened when mm. one meets him in the only twice then in the next film it's like this weird thing where they haven't met before and then you know it's just it is yeah it was just a, a little bit weird i don't know what about you calvin yeah. i completely agree i think that i think they have actually had a perfect screen blow felt but it's the unseen one it's um eric polman's voice anthony dawson's hands uh, that is just i do love donald pleasance i love charles gray i think Christoph Waltz is probably the only one that I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know if you really got this. And in a way, it matches it with the books as well, with Fleming, because Blofeld's in three of those, and he is, like, he's a very, he changes. He is a different character in those three books. Um, you know, going from Thunderball, which is your classic megalomaniac um, villain, um, to You Only Live Twice, where he's like this D completely insane, demented guy living in this castle yeah. in Japan, married to um, Irma Bunt, and they're just this horrific married couple that Bond <laughs> has to go up against. Um, and I'd like to see an adaptation of that, actually, in the movies. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's a shame that Waltz didn't quite nail it, I, I don't think, anyway. Um, but what about you, Randy? How, how do you feel? I would agree with the the Waltz um, interpretation of it. I feel like it's missing something. Yeah. And I think they, I don't, it feels rushed the way they brought him into the Daniel Craig, although they alluded to him since Casino Royale as being the, the, the orchestrator of everything. And I just felt mm -hmm. like that was kind of, I don't know, haphazardly done compared to how he was with Terry and, and Donald Pleasant. So I'm hoping that however they do it moving forward, it'll be better. Yeah. But, um, I think you also have to have a good bond. You have to have that dynamic, that, that chemistry between the two actors and also um, just the, you know, how they portray it these days compared to how they did it in the past. So mm. we'll see. completely we'll see. agree. And I like that Christoph Waltz is getting another chance at it in No Time to Die, especially because in interviews he talked about like how he doesn't feel like he nailed it, Inspector. Um, and now that yeah. he's coming back to do it again, I'm almost more excited for it because I like that he acknowledges that it didn't work quite perfectly and he can try and build on that and make, you know, good on it. Um, if, so if, he'll shave his head, if he'll shave his head, <laughs> then I think I'll, I'll be fine with it. So. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Agree. Thank you so much. Do you have an actor? Yeah. Here you go. Cheers. Do you have an actor you would cast as the perfect blowfield? Oh my gosh. 
Maybe I'll respond back in the chat, but I'd have to think about for. that one because I'm looking. I'm looking for again that that dynamic, and I just I I, I like Kristoff, but I don't know that he's impressed me yeah. yet. Sure. Mm. Yeah. So let's add me in the chat yeah. box. I yeah. want to see but who you come up with. I will. Yes, nice. sir. I will. Cool. Good chance, you man. Yeah, Blofeld's a funny one. Like on paper, he would just, I mean, he is just perfect Bond villain. And yet there's just so many others. Like I think Goldfinger is probably a better kind of, uh, you know, maniacal villain. And so much of it is what the actor brings to the part as well. Mm. It's it's funny. You know, it's, he usually tops out the Bond villain votes, doesn't he? When like some magazine will be like, oh, we're going to vote for the best mm. Bond villains. It's usually Goldfinger that comes out as number one, isn't it? Which is which is interesting. Because mm. I would have thought, you know, especially when you take someone like Austin Powers, you would think that Blofeld is like the the iconic villain. And I suppose like Broken of the yeah. Cat is the iconic thing, isn't it? But when mm -hmm. the normal, like uh, I say civilians, non-lunatics like you and I mm. and everybody else on this call, um, would they really know the name Ernst Ever Blofeld? They'd of course know Goldfinger, mm. wouldn't they? But would would the mm. name Blofeld be that obvious? I would say these days most people would say, look at Blofeld and be like, oh look, there's Doctor Evil. Yeah. yeah yeah totally mm. yeah i mean you, you, i mean it just the reveal inspector as well like you know that big like my name is ernest Avra blofeld i remember seeing it um in the cinema and you could hear audible like huh what like people were sort of like muttering a bit afterwards like it was like you know um you know 12 year old lads like sort of checking with their dads like what's this about yeah, what's, this? what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um but yeah it's yeah it's a sh yeah the name didn't really stick as much as like you say goldfinger just the concept of a villain obsessed with some kind of uh, materialistic item seems to have stuck more oh, yeah all right do we have do we we are making requests uh some people are trying to come on who do not have the appropriate platform unfortunately so we're we're kind of going through a few of them at a time cool we can just talk until yeah we you, see you'll see face. somebody pop on <laughs> all right yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, just for, uh, yeah. it was randy that was on last wasn't it was that uh, who we just yeah yeah um just before he popped on i was gonna ask you did you watch brosnan when you, you mentioned you recently watched golden eye again were you watching it with pierce at the time <laughs> oh of course yes yes um but i saw i saw it again after that because it kind of made me yeah want to go back but uh yes oh hello we have a we have a someone to talk to hello yep yes hello jessica <laughs> it happens <laughs> Yes. Hmm. Okay. I guess I, I could probably go first on that one. I suppose. Um. I I think it um it, it speaks to a genre that I think needs more gender representation, and I think that you know um I saw I saw Atomic Blonde recently, which was you know the big Charlize Theron um spy movie, and. I, I couldn't follow the plot at all, but it had some amazing action sequences. She's fantastic in it. Um, and I just think, sort of thinking like, oh yeah, why aren't there more of these? I think if, I mean, if, you know, they exactly recast right, James Bond I'm, with a, with a, sorry, with a woman, so it's not James right Bond anymore. I mean, the name would change. It would James be something Bond else. So I think you so can have good. those two things James going on Bond simultaneously. And I don't think it necessarily has to be as blatant as, you know, Jane Bond, for example. Which is the so name? She took that and made it like right. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> I would love it. It would be amazing. She looks fabulous. She's super cool. I'm like, this is woman James Bond. Yeah. Like, don't touch James mm. Bond, please. Just leave it. <laughs> Just leave that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that, no, I, 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 we're in complete agreement on this. I think there's there's room for both. It doesn't need to be an either or. And I think it's a shame actually that they feel like, or you know, media outlets, whatever, wherever these um, sort of insinuations come from, that it would need to piggyback on top of an established franchise. When no, it's just, just make something new and make it good, and people will go and see it. <laughs> it's as simple as that, really. Yeah. 
hundred percent. I'm in full agreement there. I think at the, at the end of the day, yeah, do two things if that's the need. Like in, in the sixties, they had the man from Uncle, and then they had a, a spin-off series called The Girl from Uncle for a while. And it's like, why not just do that? It's. I think mainly it's more the press just trying to wind people up than actually a real thing. Do you know what I mean? It's just you know, it, it, there's like there's that whole thing about maybe there being a doctor no angle in no time to die my thought is rather than do that like just have like he looks great as a as a new villain with what we've seen of him anyway in the trailers and stuff why go back to that rather than just have a new one but there you go oh my god i love natalia because she is so awesome she's a tech girl she's so cool she does not let bond push her around nice. love it <laughs> that being said amazing i love severine because she's stunning that dress oh my god i'm working on my own version of it it's taken me a year your favorite I, can't, I can't do it it's so hard i have the dress i have no sleeves no legs and i've done the nice. phoenix pattern 15 times and it has never turned out good it's just sitting in a lump on my table right now going you know what i can't because we're moving on if i'm just gonna rip it it's just it's ruined terrible mm. but oh well but not right now you can hear me screaming i'm sure from my apartment hallway just, why won't it work pushing it through the sewing machine and it's just i undo it 18 times and it's it's hard <laughs> it's very hard <laughs> it's not an easy skill at all oh you need to keep up with that yeah. that's yeah and there's no pattern yeah <laughs> like there was a pattern i don't know like four years ago when or closer to when Christina Royale came out, there was a, a pattern for um, her backless dress. I found it. <laughs> yes, they don't make it anymore. No. I, right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even, it, I yeah, the, give it a go. <laughs> I think I'd just, just be bound for disaster. Figure it out. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I don't know. Fudge it. <laughs> Absolutely. This is mm. my whole day. I have nothing to do today. I'm like, James Bond, oh, <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, I, yeah. I hope you're sticking around for the style panel in a bit, because, uh, oh, nice. Okay, great, because you'll, yeah. Nice. Excellent. Good yes. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank thank you very much. Yeah, no, it was really great. Thank you. And good luck with the dress. <laughs> yeah, right, cool. Excellent. Do you have a favorite Bond girl, Calvin? Oh, uh, well, Natalia's up there, certainly. Um, Vespa as well. Uh, I think she's great. I, I, I do like that, like, Vespa, um, she only comes into the film about halfway through, but she's so impactful. It's really, it contrasts with Natalia, who's quite rare in a way, in that she's the main Bond girl who is present throughout much of the film, and we follow her independent of Bond for a good chunk of the story, which is quite unusual. Um, what about you? You're a Tracy man. Oh, goodness gracious me. I bit <laughs> you got half an hour. Um no, I feel like for me, the two timeless Bond girls are Tracy and Vespa. Like they are the, right. the top of the tree, so to speak. But because mm. I really have a crush on Olga Korolenko, she's up there, and the same goes for Electra as well. Huh. Goodness gracious me. I have to throw Oh yeah, Electra. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting that you define her as being in the Bond girl category. Uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, because that should be Christmas, shouldn't it? Really? Yeah. Technically, yeah. yeah. But I always thought it was interesting, when you have the, the Bond 50 Blu-ray set, um, they have pictures of all the Bond girls next to each disc of the film. For uh, World's Not Enough, they actually have a picture of Electra oh. instead okay. of... I just find it interesting that some executive somewhere made a decision <laughs> that that was going to be the image for that film, rather than Christmas Jones. Ooh, um, uh, yeah, absolutely. I was going through there. Vespa, Natalia, and Fiona Volpe are my favorite Bond girls. You've got to, oh, you've got Fiona. to give Fiona a, a, a shout out there. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Tom, someone's asked you Jinx or Miranda. We have Spency. Hi. <laughs> Spency. Hello. Hi. I'm coming at you live from rural Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know which part of America that's from. 
Oh, oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. That's Canada, it's, isn't it? It's, it's like the East Coast uh, of Canada. Like it's oh, this little, like almost island. And I'm on like right at the bottom on the South Shore on this other almost island that I live on in a village. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, that, that puts my geography to shame. I hope my old geography <laughs> teacher isn't watching this. That sounds like a, a I'm sure a lot of people aren't really familiar with where it is. So you don't have to worry. <laughs> Yes, my question is um, one of the, so I was into Bond when I was like a child, definitely because the Bond girls were such a big inspiration for myself. Mm. Um, and as an, a young, kind of, not that I fell off the train, but my introduction was Nightfire. I didn't know about Bond until I played Nightfire. Like Amazing. no idea. Wow. Um, and the first thing I thought of when I played Nightfire was, these ladies are running around in the snow in heels and a gown, and I'm living for it. <laughs> like, I need more of this. I need all of it. And my dad was like, yeah, there's a, it's a, based on a movie series. I'm like, shut up. I gotta show me. And uh, I remember I rented the movie so much from my local movie store that the 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 owner just gave me the vhs copies unfortunately that meant no one else could rent them but <laughs> um, i love that uh but i guess a little off topic but my question is really about the campiness of the vintage movie posters and how much they drew people to the cinema and mm. I, I compare them to the newer posters which are essentially just the actors photographed in their outfits um, how do you guys feel about the old way where, like, we're talking balls to the walls, like, unbelievable. I think sometimes they're, like, flying in the air. The Golden Gate Bridge is my personal favorite because you have Stacey Sutton just not even, her legs aren't even on the bridge. <laughs> and she's just holding on to Bond for dear life. And Bond is pointing at us when Zoran's behind him. I love it. What do you guys think about the old posters versus the new? Oh, Tom, do you want to go first? I love those old posters. I feel like there, there's even one, like you talk about things that don't make sense, like not being even being on the bridge. There's that one in uh, the You Only Live Twice poster where he's like standing on the edge of the volcano horizontally, like just standing there holding his gun, looking cool. But it just seems to be the most weird out there concept. But uh, yeah. The business those old ones i i'm not a fan of like the whole you know menswear catalog sort of theme of 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 bond posters that we've had in in recent years like the the one i love in in recent times is the casino teaser poster where he's sitting at the casino table and he's got the wolf on the table in front of him and the cars and the chips love that i would say the i i think my favorite of the old school ones would probably be live and let die and I would say the last great Bond poster we had would be The Living Daylights. That's um, The Living Daylights, did that one get a vintage poster? Because the only thing I can think of is really the one where you see the back of an actress or a model that I assume is not Miriam Dabo yeah. and uh, Jane and Timothy Dalton pointing a gun at her. Um, I assume by the vintage poster you mean that. Let me see if I can find it on my phone. It's the one where you've got you've got the sort of the pattern of the gun barrel and then all the loads of scenes from the movie are sort of like in the gun barrel. Let me see if I can find right. it. Right. It's clicking. It's clicking. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, yeah. While Tom's talking about that, I think I'll I'll just jump in because I'm really um, appreciative that you asked this question because I've been doing some research on this for an upcoming video uh, that I'm making I'm, because uh, just, oh, sorry, go on. Uh, I just gotta say, Calvin, I'm a huge fan of your videos, and uh, oh, you. that's a big part of why I kind of got into Bond again as a young adult. Uh, your videos were definitely, I, ha I had them, not what I was supposed to, but I had them on while I was working, because I'm an animator, and I can kind of have videos on while I work, and I thought, let's watch Bond content, why not? And <laughs> you were, you were just like kind of the first thing that came up, and eventually just all my feed was your recommendations and I think I've watched every single one of your videos and a lot multiple times. Oh thank you. That's that's really kind. Thank you. And I love that you're an animator as well. I work in animation. I, I studied animation. So it's uh you know what it, uh, Roger Moore of course was a, a aspiring animator in some of the um early years of his career. Uh so there's something about animation and bond there. Um 
Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, the, the, on, on the posters, um, I think they actually have a lot more to do with the public perception of James Bond, particularly those older, campier ones, than we have reason, um, than, than we really um, reasonably say. I, I, I say that because, like, so much of the perception of, like, Roger Moore's Bond, for example, is that he's, like, you know, meets every dangerous situation with, oh, he presses a button on a gadget and the villains are vanquished, raises an eyebrow, all that kind of stuff you know, he has the perception of being a bloodless Bond, in a way. When yeah. you actually look at the films, there are scene upon scene upon scene of him, like, in some kind of physical, uh, you know, uh, skirmish, he bleeds, even in Man with the Golden Gun, which is considered one of the campier ones, he gets roughed up and he's got blood coming from his mouth, like, after yeah. a fight. Like, they're quite brutal, and I was wondering, like, why do, Why is there this greater public perception of Bond as this, like, suave, like, oh-ho, just in a suit, pressing a button and, you know, killing villains? And I think it is the posters. It is seeing Sean Connery in Young Live Twice with his, you know, that poster where he's, like, sideways going into the volcano lair, like, in a full yeah. tuxedo with his yeah. not hair out of place. His toes just touching the little ladder, yeah. like... As if that would hold him up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a beauty. I really like that poster. Yeah, yeah I know. There it is. Yeah. It's a That's good one. Cool. I love that a lot of independent artists are taking the time to turn these more modern films and their modern posters into vintage. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I love some of the old vintage looks. It's, uh, yeah, Sean Lowell on Twitter, who you can just about see one there, which is, he's really inspired by the old Japanese um, posters from, like, the Connery era, and he does his own sort of, like, montages and artwork. It's really mm. lovely. This is without the text, but, yeah, they're really great. I think I think most of the fan, you know, produced posters have been better than the official stuff um, recently. Yeah, I think the only time an official poster, uh, a, a modern poster ever worked on myself was, mm. um, I remember when Spyfall was coming out and Quantum of Solace was just not it for me personally, but I, I, it's... It's, yeah. And uh, so Skyfall was kind of just, I wasn't uh, super keeping up to date with it until mm. I saw the still of uh, Sevedin in her Macau gown. And I'm like, I gotta see this movie. I have yeah. to see it. So I guess they do work in that sense because I'm more into, a little bit more into like the style aspect of it. And once mm. I saw this absolutely intricate, detailed, uh, gown, I absolutely had to see this film, and it's a shame that she wasn't in the film as much as I was hoping, um, because Veronis Nalo is, like, incredible. She's absolutely oh, yeah. incredible. By the way, yeah. uh, gentlemen, not to call from uh, Q Branch with my horrible American accent, but um, did you notice that Spency looks to be wearing a domino outfit? Hey, oh. hey. Sharp little eyes you've got, Q Branch. <laughs> 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 oh, that's well amazing done. yeah um i just as a hobbyist i do bomb girl cosplays um i had to nice. do this one at i had to do this one at 9 a.m so i'm just kind of like maybe a little disheveled but <laughs> i try <laughs> looks fantastic All right. i'm gonna be finding you on instagram after this <laughs> oh it's uh at spency maria at spency maria sorry i might have a little bit of an accent because i'm from like I said, South Shore, I'm French. Oh, yeah. excellent. Lovely. Okay, I have found you. Excellent. All right, well, cool. Thank you very much for that. Um, no, yeah. thank you, guys. Uh, I really appreciate this. This is a fantastic way to distract from everything that's going on, and you guys are all doing a fabulous job. So, like, oh, thank you. applause. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you. Take care. Gentlemen, okay. um, we are at the 10 minute mark. Uh, the five minute countdown will come in five minutes. Would you like another question or would you like to do some closing remarks? I would like another question. I don't know about Tom. If... <laughs> I have no remarks to say. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a question. Let's have, let's have a question. Yeah. Very, very good gentlemen. We are calling Hunter Brining, which sounds like a James Bond Hunter name. Brining. Hunter Brining to the main stage. That's fantastic. Okay. That's a proper hench person name. It is indeed. 
I feel really uh, guilty that I didn't notice that Spency was dressed up as Domino. Uh, Thunderball is one of my least visited films. Uh, really? Good lord. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Too much underwater stuff. It's so Goodness slow. Me. Goodness me. Mm. What would you Just say? Just for saying that, we're going to have to open the trap door for you, uh, Royal All Thunderball right. feature. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Hunter. Tommy, long time listener, uh, worker. It's my go. first Hunter. Bond event, finally. So I'm glad to be here. Nice. And Calvin, I've probably seen all your videos a million times. Oh, and thank you. I would like That's to say lovely. this is my little Spectre friend. Oh, oh yeah, nice. he's my little quarantine what? pal. I took a page out of your book, Tommy, and you know, went and got a little friend. <laughs> oh. What's his name? I would like to say Felix, but unfortunately, it's Rick. Rick. Rick Sylvester. Rick Sanchez. There you go. Important Bond. Yes. Rick Sanchez. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. I like that. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep it short because I know other times are running out. My question for you, Tom, I know you've talked about this some on the podcast, mm -hmm. but when you first kind of opened the floodgates of Bond to your significant other, like really showed them how crazy you were. Yeah. What was their reaction? Do you know what? It was, I, I went all in on our very first date. We were sitting across from each other at the table doing the usual chit chat. And then I said, listen, I've got something I need to tell you about. Um, and I need to get it out of the way first before, you know, we go any further. And she's obviously sitting there thinking, okay, he's, he's married. Yeah. He's got kids. What, what's the whole deal? And I went, I've got a, a pretty deep, deep obsession with James Bond. And then you could see the the like the the uh, the relief of like, oh, is that all this? That's it. But um, like at the time, she was she used to work in the in the movie business in LA, so she was bang into into movies, and she even owned a couple. She I think she had the Man with the Golden Gun and one of the Brosnans, I think, um, in her DVD collection at the time. And uh, and yeah, she was she was good as gold about it. I bought her a whole collection of Fleming books because she would ask me about it. One of her jobs was like working. And stuff and she would read a lot of books and work on transferring them into scripts and all that kind of business so i bought her loads of the flemings and she read through to i think it was dr no so she, oh, well, she had great, a good yeah. stab there before she got uh, distracted yeah absolutely well i just want to thank her as well for you know pushing you and continuing the podcast i know we were all holding their breath there for a little bit yeah absolutely yeah it's uh you know we're we're, we're back and and cooking and so so is chris as well so absolutely. that's a nice little touch still waiting for that die another day <laughs> you're gonna be waiting a long that's, time that's brother. all right you're gonna be pleasantly surprised so jokes on you my friend so so many people <laughs> come, actually yeah so we'll, we'll we will absolutely. see it will be like i said before it will be almost like a new fresh bond film that i've not seen before so it'll be an interesting little experiment yeah what about you calvin uh, yeah, what was the reaction good bad Yes, no? Um, middling, I guess. Um, I've been with my partner now for like, oh God, three years or so, and he's seen maybe six Bond oh, you gotta films, get cracking on and that none one. of them have really. Yeah, no, I know. It, it's like, it's a real process. It's like, a, we can watch a Bond film tonight, and it's, no, I think we'll end up watching Netflix or something like that. So, you know, I'm working on it, but I'm, I'm impressed with Tom, like, I mean, got, going to the effort of reading the books, I mean, that's like, you know, that's other level dedication. <laughs> yeah, that's when I knew, man. I was like, all right, we're going to stick. Yeah, up. yeah this is, this is going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, before, before I get kicked off, I just want to share a couple little things. Um, been with my girlfriend now three years, like you, Tom. She's a foreigner. She's from across the pond. Nice. Um, okay. she, she didn't really get it at first. Year. She's like, oh, okay. And she really got it. Um, long story short, we couldn't make it to the 50th anniversary. Uh, I'm in the military, so I didn't have enough leave built up. So unfortunately, I missed it. But I did get to Switzerland for the 50th anniversary last September. But two weeks nice. before the trip, my girlfriend got hit by a bus. Whoa! Yeah. Um, fortunately, she's okay, but she broke her arm. I uh, got two titanium plates and fifteen screws. And Damn. of course, you know, we wanted to make sure she was good. I'm like, Doc, look, I'm going to Switzerland to go see Bond next week. Can she do this? It's like, well, you know, it's up to her, but you know, uh, yeah, but probably not. Mate, we went to Pies Galeria. We went to Fruca Pass. We did everything. She was such a trooper. Nice. She had a sling in the arm. That's right then there, new man. 
Oh, dude. Oh. Nice one, Mrs. Absolutely. Hunter. I like that. And, and one more thing. <laughs> I know you uh, don't, I don't know if this ever was a quick fire question, but I haven't heard it asked lately. It's the most Bondian thing you've ever done. Now, for me, I can't say I've done this yet, but the town my girlfriend lives in, her best friend since childhood owns a hotel. And it's like a museum type hotel. And one of their main things is an original Ferris wheel car from Vienna. I have, a I have oh, asked nice. her best friend if I could have access to that car for one night. And he said, absolutely. I just need to find the key. <laughs> that's incredible so i'll let you know amazing oh I, yes i don't i don't oh, think fantastic. it's the same number of car but that's all right it's an original being a ferris wheel car that's nice a, yeah nice work dude oh that's fantastic yeah oh and i'm glad that she's yeah recovered <laughs> and everything uh that's yeah oh yeah absolutely and unfortunately yeah. i can't see each other because they'll travel ban but Last week, she's like, you know what? I think we mm. should uh, get on Skype and watch a bond together. So I'm just like, there you that's go. That's the keeper. Absolutely. That's that's yeah. the measurement of, of, of whether the partner is suitable as well as their reaction to bond. And if they instigate a bond viewing, he's like. And oh, lastly, for Chris, is... her favorite so far is Octopussy by a mile. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Gentlemen, I, I need to be, unfortunately, the bad guy here at Q Branch and let you know that the other panelists are warming up. Of course. And unfortunately, we'll have to say goodbye to Hunter. But thank you Absolutely. so much, Hunter. Thank you, David. And you pronounced yes. my name correctly, which Here's is buddy. fantastic. I try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Tom, was fun. Tom and Calvin, thank you so much, gentlemen. You deserve a beer, <laughs> wine, or whatever beverage you're going to get. I hope you're going to stay for the rest of the convention. Oh, of course. Thanks, David. Yeah. Thank you for inviting. All right, guys. Talk to you all later. Yeah. Take it easy. Thank you very much. Bye. See you. Take care. And absolutely. And we will see everybody else in about three and a half minutes for the fitness panel. See you all then. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.